This is Twit. I heard from many different listeners that during the WWDC developer presentation on pass keys, Apple talked about synchronizing keys. So I listened carefully to the entire presentation. For anyone who's interested, the 34-minute presentation video is this week's GRC shortcut of the week. So that means it's https colon slash slash grc dot sc slash 875. As I said, it's about a 34-minute presentation, 33, 34. And I believe that what these people thought they heard was Apple addressing the need for, or thought that what they heard, you know, being Apple addressing the need for the type of synchronization we talked about last week, syncing apps across non-Apple ecosystems like Android and Windows, is not what happened. I found no mention of anything like that anywhere in the presentation, nor is it anywhere in the developer docs, which I've also linked to in the show notes for anybody who wants to jump right to it. The types of pass keys, the types of pass key sharing Apple supports is first and foremost using the iCloud keychain, of course, to dynamically synchronize keys these pass keys across an individual user's Apple ecosystem. So as we know, all Apple devices thus will remain synchronized. The other form of sharing Apple described uses AirDrop to pass logon credentials to another user. An AirDrop can also be used to permanently pass a pass key to someone else for some site or service, permanently adding it to their keychain to use from then on. So that's sort of like explicit, here's my passkey, you can now use it to log on as me. But so far, from everything I've seen, Apple has in no way suggested that they will ever be synchronizing passkeys with external non-Apple platforms. You know, nothing's been fed so far either way. They haven't said they're not going to, but nobody seems to have asked that question, and it was not part of the developer presentation. But Apple's example solution of using AirDrop to send a passkey to another person's iDevice, you know, like, you know, a friend of yours, a, a spouse, a, 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 a child, a sibling, who you know, whatever, for their subsequent use, highlighted something that I think is important to understand. And this is where, in thinking about it, I realized what really makes what, what really makes Squirrel different from Fido and why. Squirrel is a complete solution for secure remote logon. Whereas Fido, and you know, technically Fido 2 with its pass keys, is a replacement for usernames and passwords. The two are not the same. For example, take the case of giving someone else access to a site. If you give them your pass key, which is Apple's solution demonstrated during the developer presentation, then they are now you on that site in every meaningful way. When they authenticate, it's you authenticating because they're using your passkey. It's the exact equivalent of you giving them your username and password. And since they are you, they can see your settings, your private details, everything that you can see and do when you log in using that same passkey. And since they are you, they're presumably also able to change the passkey to lock you out. And they can presumably pass it along to others. Unless Apple has realized that secondary passkey sharing is a really bad idea and should be blocked, which would technically be possible. Well, I don't know is, either this, way. This is what we, the situation we're in right now. When Lisa needs to log into our uh, Comcast account, I just send her my password and log in. She doesn't have a separate right. one because it's the same account. So right. that's the standard. Does Squirrel solve that with some sort of shared access? Uh -huh. No. Well, of course. How could it? Because Comcast 
only has one login for my account. Okay, so, uh, 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 okay, so I don't know either way whether they're going to block secondary passkey sharing. In any event, when you voluntarily give your passkey to someone else, your site access has now escaped your control. And I agree with you, Leo. It's exactly the same thing. We solved this with Squirrel. If you want to allow someone to share some access to an account as a guest, for example, sharing a Netflix account, you obtain a one-time invitation token from the site and provide it to them. When they attempt to log into the site with their own Squirrel ID, the site doesn't know them. So it prompts them to create a new account or to use an outstanding invitation if they have one. They, their use of the invitation identifies them to the site as a guest of yours, enabling them to subsequently log into your account using their Squirrel ID. Since they're using their Squirrel ID, and we just sold, <laughs> sold a copy of SpinRight 6, thank you, mm -hmm. if you're a listener. <laughs> um, since they're using their Squirrel ID and guests are unable to request invitations for others, you, as the account owner, retain control. And you're able to rescind their guest access status at any time, which isn't possible otherwise, I mean, like in traditional username and password sharing. And all this scales seamlessly to enterprise use when hundreds of users might need to share access to common resources. It's called managed shared access. And it's part of the Squirrel solution. It's already there. We have an online demo with the entire solution working, and its operation is fully worked out and specified. And needless to say, there's a lot more to Squirrel. So as it stands, the FIDO2 passkey system is, without question, more secure than usernames and passwords. No doubt about it, it's definitely superior. But the FIDO designers were crypto people working to solve one small part of the much larger problem of practical, real-world user authentication. They didn't think the whole problem through because that was never their charter. They could credibly say it wasn't their job. It wasn't. But... Even in a FIDO2 passkeys world, that job still needs to be done. Squirrel does it. But unfortunately, FIDO and passkeys does not do it. Unfortunately, this means that instead of being as revolutionary as it could have been, we get another half-baked solution. It's way better than what came before. But it missed the opportunity, which comes along so rarely, to address the practical needs of and really solve the network authentication problem, rather than the true breakthrough that Squirrel's adoption would have meant, we're going to get incremental progress. It's definitely progress. But because it wasn't really thought through as an entire solution, FIDO is basically a crypto hack. It also brings a whole new set of problems. If FIDO is to be our solution, we really do need some form of centralized passkey storage and synchronization, not only within a vendor, but also across vendors. Last week, someone calling themselves Captain Jack Zeno mentioned at SGGRC in a tweet to someone else. So it appeared in my Twitter feed. Captain Joe Jack wrote to this other person, you may be excited about pass keys, but Squirrel was carefully developed over seven years by at SGGRC and solves problems you may not even realize you'd have. And he said he mentioned potentially cross-platform portability. And, and yeah, we, as we know, Squirrel does that and it does so much more. Someone tweeting as Dr. Nathan P. Gibson, I guess that's, I mean, that's his Twitter handle, said, Hi, Steve. Loved your detailed breakdown of Passkey. You mentioned waiting for password managers to start providing sync services for these FIDO2 private keys. 
I see that LastPass seems to be promising something, quote, later this year, unquote. And then he has a link to the blog. He says, do you know anything more about when this syncing might be coming to a password manager near me? And so I saw LastPass's blog post last Monday the 6th. It was a bit confusing. And I mean, I spent some time trying to figure out what they were saying because they were at the same time also promoting the new use of what they called no more passwords today. Uh, and what I understand is that apparently that's by the use of their own LastPass authenticator, which would use the biometrics present on a handset. Thus, you could unlock your LastPass vault without using a master password. Okay, so not that big an announcement. But separate from that immediate announcement was indeed a forward-looking statement of their intention to support FIDO2 passkeys. So that's not today, but at least one major password manager is taking aim at this problem. And if one does, they'll all need to. So I suspect that the biggest effect of Apple's, Google's, and Microsoft's support may be to induce websites to bring up their own support for WebAuthN, which is what's necessary on the back end. And so let's talk for a minute. By the way, that's what about one password says they're going to do is uh, support AuthN. Good. Yeah. Good. So that's the way to do it, right? Is, uh, yes. And then presumably there'd be an export import feature from one password manager or iCloud, I would hope. I would. Well, yes. Now, it'll be really interesting to see whether Apple allows a wholesale export. Well, they say they are. Their, they say there's an export feature. Yeah. No. They didn't no. say that. They No. They said they, there's a passkey sharing, which is different. You use AirDrop to send one key no, no, to a I phone. No, no. I know that's not the same. But I somebody right, told me right. and I didn't. I, you've watched the presentation. I watched the presentation. I read the developer docs. Okay. There's not a word no export. about okay. about export. Okay. And if I'm wrong, listeners, please correct me. I'd, I'd much rather it be true that they're going to allow export than than just you know be a curmudgeon and say well I didn't get it right. So you know if anyone finds that there's an export of passkeys from I land, uh, I want to know. 